I think what's been really exciting about the OFL's last five years has been the remarkable extent to which it is in the public eye and speaking on issues that are of relevance to workers, whether they're unionized or not. And I think in the 20 years that I've been, uh, you know, an observer of the Ontario labour movement and also a participant, I don't think since the days of action that we've seen an OFL so vibrant, so present on the pressing issues of the day, uh, intervening in key public policy debates like occupational health and safety, harassment, minimum employment standards. And that's the labor movement that I want to see and that I think workers need. You know, I've worked with the OFL for many, many years and the OFL has often been on site on important issues, but SIDS made it way more visible. You know, without the Ontario Federation of Labor, we wouldn't have had the kind of relationship that we have in the social movement with, uh, with the labor movement. What motivated me to run for president of the OFL back in 2009, um, I felt that my experience would allow me to be able to rebuild the profile of the OFL and to re-engage with the community, re-engage with government, and most importantly, re-engage with the membership in terms of mobilization. Um, putting people on the streets uh, in some ways uh, helps the agenda overall. I would say what we managed to do in the last six years was bring together a common front and say to these folks, you're our equal partners, your fights are our fights. And I would hope in return that they would see the battles of the labor movement as the fight of the community. With the 2014 provincial election, Tim Hudak was knocking on the door and he had a virulently uh, anti-union message. He would have brought right to work in, in Ontario. And uh, the OFL's leadership in mobilizing labor and all progressive forces in Ontario to defeat Hudak as the number one priority of that election paid off in spades. So what laid the context for the Stop Hudak campaign was the imminent threat of right to work legislation in Ontario. Hudak said he was going to do it. It had just happened in uh, Michigan and there was a very real possibility looking at the polls that a conservative government uh, could be elected in Ontario and we could have right to work legislation come down on our heads. So the big step was getting the mandate from the OFL convention and then we set about really rigorous campaign planning and laying the groundwork for really rigorous execution of the campaign. This campaign was different in a number of ways. It was very focused. It was, we did, often there's a temptation, we're going to go out and tell the whole world, we're going to target the public. We had a focus on union members. We recognized that a large number of union members vote conservative. So the flip side of that sad reality is we have direct access to a significant block of conservative voters. And there's a wedge issue with that block of conservative voters. They're ben the benefit of union membership and their collective agreement. There's no doubt that we significantly reduced uh, the support for the Conservatives amongst union members. It had been at about 3%. We drove it down to about 19%. This was a tremendous accomplishment and I think it'll have a lasting effect in our movement.